For RCR Wireless News, I'm Sean Kinney, and we're here today with Serge Villeneger, who is Qualcomm Technologies' SVP and GM of 4G, 5G, and Industrial IoT. So Serge, ahead of Mobile World Congress, Qualcomm's put out a lot of really interesting news that speaks to the roadmap for 5G. On the modem side, you guys have announced some upgrades to the X50 and then announced a new product in the X24. Can you share some of the details of those? Yeah, absolutely. So. First, we've uh, updated and, and, and announced momentum on X50 adoption by the carrier community, by the OEM community, as well as progress we've made in, in qualifying the product for uh, commercial release. And we're essentially announcing that we've, we've achieved a multi-gigabit uh, capability and we're going to demo this at Mobile World Congress. We were announcing uh, that 18 operators uh, are going to use the X50 to validate their deployment and eventually launch uh, their service uh, starting in 2019. And finally, we're announcing that 18 uh, plus OEM are adopting X50 as part of their first 5G device development, again, launching starting in 2019. In addition, we're announcing that uh, Gigabit LTE uh, is going to be pushed to 2 Gigabit LTE with the X24 Snapdragon modem, which we're introducing at Mobile World Congress. And um, that will allow us to essentially uh, offer a continuity of service between 4G Gigabit LTE and 5G as the 5G system are being launched starting in 2019. Yeah, this idea of continuity of service, I think this is really important. We, uh, we assume that early 5G deployments will be focused on uh, heavy traffic areas, metropolitan cores, and then ideally have a gigabit LTE surround. So with these two modems in the market, what would that user experience be like as you travel through a 5G network onto a gigabit LTE network? So the idea is to minimize the, the variance in that ex experience, obviously. The radio link is in nature uh, as, as variants, but I think with the technology we're bringing to both LTE and 5G in terms of antenna diversity, uh, high bandwidth capability, we're going to be able to minimize that variance as the user travels from a 5G coverage area to a 4G coverage area. There'll always be some uh, gap, but again, what we're doing here with X24 is really getting that gap uh, as small as possible. And Serge, another thing I wanted to get your perspective on is, you know, as it relates to 5G, there's a lot of focus on this enhanced mobile broadband use case, but it's a lot more. There's big implications for the development of the Internet of Things. So can you tell me a little bit about how Qualcomm is taking their expertise with the, the network edge and then tying that into their strategy for the Internet of Things? Yeah, absolutely. So. 5G by nature is, start, is going to start with consumer use cases because that's, that's where the, the scale is right now into the mobile platform. And to, to sort of bootstrap the deployment of these networks, we have to tap into that scale and, and leverage that scale. But pretty quickly, and actually it's happening already with LTE, we're going to uh, push the mobile platform into these other industries and use cases. And the reason it's very relevant is because we're seeing a trend where the intelligence is moving from the center, the cloud, back to the edge. And sort of it's been historically a, a constant that when something is good, eventually you want to distribute it and push it out to the edge. And it turns out the attributes of the mobile platform that we have for the phone are directly relevant to this edge intelligence. I think you mentioned IoT. Historically, it's been referred as Internet of Things. I think moving forward, we're going to refer to it as the intelligence of things at the edge, because this is right, really what's going to happen. And the mobile platform is directly applicable to that transition. So if you have this proliferation of intelligence at the network edge, does that supplant the need for intelligence in a centralized cloud, or does it just complement it? It complements it, and by the way, just so we're clear, we're not talking about intelligence at the network edge. We're talking uh, intelligence at the extreme edge, meaning the device edge or even the sensor edge, at the point where 
digital world interfaces with the analog, the real world. And I think that's why you want the intelligence to be all the way out to the edge. A lot of interesting developments at Qualcomm's come out with the head of Mobile World Congress and Serge. I appreciate you taking the time to share your perspective with us. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.